part of our call. Hey. Krikor, hello. Hey. Uh, Krikor, hello. Hey, hey. Hey, Ivy. Hey, Anna. Hey, welcome to the show. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for Hello, joining just us. Second. I'm not hearing you. Oh. Oh. One second. Okay. Now I can hear you, I guess. How's it going? <laughs> it's good. Are we, can we see you too? Oh, you want to see me? Of course. Yes. <laughs> if you feel safe, it's you. <laughs> yes. There we go. There you are. <laughs> okay. And welcome to, the, feel... uh, welcome Hello. to the party. I, I feel welcome bad. I missed the, the I feel bad. I missed the bathroom discussion. And I have to jump <laughs> back into chess now. No, it, listen. Uh, it's gonna never be boring too late now. to talk more about the bathrooms, <laughs> but yeah, we have a few more games to discuss now. It's, uh, it's you know, it's the human condition. I'm sure we all right. have a, a good story like that. Actually, they, they've some of the players have started already, so they got yeah. tired of waiting. Uh, not only have some of the players what? started, some of the players have finished. Nepo Karyakin is a draw. Already? Okay. Yeah. But Weren't they just playing the Oh, the same round? opening. <laughs> yeah, there was this Berlin. Uh, I'm going to crop a little bit. Uh, Krikor, okay. just tell me how you're, how you're comfortable sitting, and I'll keep it like that. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm trying to, yeah, good. avoid dancing. Yeah, here. I'm yeah, good we anyway. don't have a lot of space. Maybe for the next I'm gonna event, stay here. we'll have a, a little bit more space, but... Um, it's fine. Let's take a look at... So oh, we also have another result, and that's Hikaru's game. Same opening, same position, a draw against Maxime Vachelagrav. Actually? <laughs> they want us to Already? talk about toilets. <laughs> they don't want to throw the topic back to they bathrooms. Oh my god, I didn't even get the game on the screen. They already drew two draws the exact same way. Okay, well, let's go let somewhere just... else. Okay, since... Let me change my... Okay. <clears throat> It's better now, I guess. Okay. Carl's Since we don't have that much space, yeah, it's better now. <laughs> oh, the headphones, yeah. Definitely. Let's go with the smaller Thank one. You. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now we're good now. Okay. That's amazing. Uh, so, so the games, which games are on now that two are done, and the other one, there are two pairs who haven't started yet because of that long end game. Yes. So. I've got Carlson Aronian up because Aronian is in a position where he he's got to get some points. Uh, and Rajabov also is Rajabov still playing or did they draw? Oh, they drew. officially a draw. We could show the final position because this is exactly what we were talking about. That a bishop and a pawn. Even if you get this position, it's still a theoretical draw. You cannot promote your pawn in that corner. The color of the corner is wrong. Crazy! I can't believe they actually drew this position. Um, yeah, I thought they, were, they had good chances before before the, the exchanges, but I don't know what was the plan, but maybe... Is this endgame, like, that they got with queen, bishop, two versus queen and three? Is this a draw? Or should black be winning here? I feel it should be winning, but it's it's hard, but maybe not. I don't know. Maybe just bring the king over and try to infiltrate with the king, with the king and the queen and try to force an exchange that is not drawing by force as it happened. I don't know. Yeah, there was this constant h5. This is where around the time where the toilet conversation began, when neither yeah. player wanted to play h5. I, <laughs> I lost my focus. I was watching, and then I, I also got driven by. No, how that's... are you doing, by the way, Anna? Like, how are you doing, guys? Where... We are doing great. We are happy to see you because it gets a bit yeah. boring. It's only Levy and me all the time. Same thing every day. So good oh, to have guests. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, we've started to, every single event that we do, we've started like a new thing. So we have a consistent charity stream. We have a consistent, nice. uh, Hikaru said, check Nepo Karyakin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so we, we, we've tried to invite like more people. Um, I mean, well, better question for you is, uh, how are you doing? How is, uh, how is your kind of Furia thing going? Is, you know, is there, or is it, is it pronounced Furia? Oh yeah, 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 it's good. Yeah. So yeah. is it uh It's going well definitely. It's going well and uh the stream has uh has grown quite a lot these last like three months or so. And I'm pretty excited to be representing them in, in events also and over the board events. But it's been like uh, one year since my last tournament. So hopefully at the end of this year I'm back playing. So that's gonna be also exciting. And I'm also happy that we don't have 
uh, Levon playing Hikaru now at this round. Otherwise, it could be kicked by the chat at some point. Mm. <laughs> Rooting for Levon, but luckily he's not playing Hikaru, so I'm relieved. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you're you're right. We you, we you can root against Magnus if you want to, because I we do have Magnus Carlson with the white yes. pieces against Levon and Ronian. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm I'm happy for that. It's already a messy messy position, right? Out of the, out of the opening. Yes. This balance. So Le Levon really likes he likes his Ragozans. He likes to play C five and. I think these two have played this line many times against each other. Many times. Let me look up the database because that's my that's what I'm thinking of too. Um, and yeah, the other two games will start definitely. later. Yeah. Ah, because they just finished. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the Grandelio Speed Shot game and Mamedero versus Rajabo will start a bit later. Hmm. Anish is trying to hold against the Against Mr. Jordan, Jordan's got a maybe a small, 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 small advantage from the opening, just a little bit more active, right? With this bishop and um... yeah, I think I I prepared this already once. It's it's equal, but it's a uh, slightly annoying for black. Yeah, prepared with white. With black, I think this is hmm. some sort of a Catalan, right, or some yeah, symmetrical, like symmetrical, symmetrical. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, with black, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Maybe th th this this is why I will never get a GM norm because I would like I would not <laughs> go for this. I don't know. I I don't I don't have confidence in my ability to defend such a position. I just <laughs> I get to is that is that what it takes? What 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 made you a grandmaster? Was it defending in these positions or like finding pleasure to defend in this like annoying <laughs> position? <maybe. laughs> Or was it something what else? Was it like, uh, you know, tactics or what kind of like, what pushed you over? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's been, uh, it was like some three or four years after, five years, I guess, be before, after I became an I am and, and, I, and I thought for a while that I was close to getting the norms, but I had to learn so much, like be more consistent. I think if I had to say something, it's like being more consistent, avoid, uh, stop making mistakes instead of making like amazing you don't need to make amazing games all the time you just need to make less mistakes i guess that was the my main issue i was trying to play nice but i was i had to improve so much before having like good result and then i got three three norms in a row wow basically that yeah very nice that's like in in a six months six month period so it's it six something. months, three norms. Yeah, in like Whoa. 2009 and 10, yeah. I was like getting really close for like two years, to 2008, nine, but then suddenly things, you get more confidence also. You were talking about that, right? With Alexander yesterday, something yeah. about energy and positivity. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's like a, you get a mental block sometimes. So when you get the first norm, usually it's a nice push to get the other ones. If you're playing well, of course, I've, you can I've make miracles. Talked about this with my friend, uh, who was Alex Ostrovsky, and when he was working hard to become a GM, like he worked very hard, he had a tournament, he got a norm, then he was twenty five fifty, very close, and you mm -hmm. have this hot streak. It sort of feels yeah. like you can. Um, and then where where were you playing? Like when when you were on your on your kind of journey? Was it was it just mostly around Brazil, or was it all over? You were traveling. The yeah, the first norm was in the Brazilian Championship. And then uh, some months later, I played in Spain. And the last one was in Romania. So two oh. tournaments in Europe. Yeah, I played this tournament in December in Brazil. And then I went to Europe next year. And I make, made a norm, I think, in March or, or something like that. March, April. And then in July, the next one. So two times going to Europe, playing some like four or five tournaments. That, that was about it, yeah. For us, it's like whenever we're able to, to play like some tournaments in a row, we just go because, yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're not finding the same stuff here. So that so makes sense. I nice. myself played against Quaker, I just wanted to throw that in, I was really? crushed. What? Yes, 
Yeah. When? Olympia? Capella Ground Capella. years ago. Yeah, Fran- an open tournament in France. 12, 12, I think? 2012, probably. Or 11. Oh, I, I don't remember the year, but I remember that I was just completely crushed. And I think I even had the white pieces and I was like, oh, I have this preparation. It's going to be fine. At least I have an equal position. No, I just, no. Yeah, it was a Sicilian with this B5. Yeah. 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 And yeah. he got in the chat saying, Krikor almost beat Andrei Kin in the last FIDE World Cup. Ooh. Yeah. Krikor with the facts there in the chat. Yeah, that was nice. It was like plus seven, plus eight for some many moves in the first game. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. It was one of those. And, oh, yeah, it was. Oh, okay, no. it was in time trouble. And it's like. How do, a, you, how do you deal with that? <laughs> like right after the game? Are, are you the kind of person that's sad, angry, disappointed? Like, how do you. Or is it you know, uh, just people who are very. I think all, all these things, okay. I think, sad. <laughs> In that, in that same day, yeah, I had to go to this uh, anti-doping test. They have have this testing after the rounds, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I I went there for like two hours after throw, after destroying my winning position. I had stayed oh, there no. for like two hours for this test, but that was pretty depressing, yeah. And thinking about, oh, I think I I didn't check. I hadn't checked with the computer yet, oh. but I said I probably I was winning. I wasn't so sure actually. I was really winning, but then. You realize, yeah. Oh, no. For those who don't know, by the way, Andrei Kin's name, he is one of the top Russian grandmasters, two-time Russian champion, and 2,700-plus grandmaster. In fact, was, uh, wasn't was he, like, in the semifinal or even... Finals, final, yeah. Final, final, played, final. Exactly. So he had a, he's, like, one of the specialists in, specialists in this format. So playing against him was a really nice motivation to, for me to to be preparing myself. Like in the, I had exactly one month to prepare. So that was really good for my game, preparing against him. And then when I was there, I, I kind of got a winning position without making anything special. So I think, this is right? Really? Am I winning against this guy? Like, I didn't make anything special in the game. And then I got in time trouble. And of course, I was completely super nervous at the time. So it's hard. You, you, you start to, you learn how to deal with these situations. When you have more experience at this, I mean, I have a lot of experience already, but that situation was completely new to me. And of course, this guy is just he's so experienced playing at high level. So even though his position was lost, his he was comfortable. He had been there a lot of times and he escaped, I'm sure, many times. So that counts a lot. And then I still have, had a draw in the next, next game, which was decent with Black, which is a very nice game, actually, just solid. But he just beat me convincingly in the tie break so but it was great overall i wasn't as sad i used to be usually because being there i mean just it was something very special already it was the first time so i wasn't that depressed or angry as usually i would be to to uh waste position like that against the top 20 in the world so it was positive anyway I was going to ask both of you, actually, because both of you have traveled a lot more than I have. Is most of your travel in your life because of chess to different countries? Like 100%. 90% <laughs> of the travel? Or 100%? I mean, 100% true that most uh, of the travel is, is for chess. Most. Definitely, yeah. How many countries have you, have you been to for chess? Oh, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know, 25, 30, I don't know. I would because guess chess? Really? 30, maybe. Probably around 30, yeah. 25, wow. 30. I don't know. For World Youth or a li- for for everything? I played World Youth like two times only. But wow. uh, I'm in many South American countries and many, many European countries also. So yeah, around. But I, I think Anna would be something like that too, right? Yeah, I, I have never counted it, but many but, countries, mo- most of Europe and uh, also outside Europe yeah. as well. It, it's just chess. Chess is such a cool way to to combine your sports and passion with with traveling because you get to see places you would not visit normally, and uh, also you you can't really afford just traveling every month. It, you cannot sure. just go on holidays <laughs> every month. But if it's for competition as part of the Olympic team, that justifies it. But so. are you a good tourist or not, Anna? Like when mm. you go, you know. I wish you... tournaments had more free days because I think that's, that's <laughs> unfortunate that most tournaments you are in a new country and you possibly don't see anything unless there's like a free day in the middle of the tournament or the last day you get to see something before you take your flight. It's a pity. Exactly because after the tournament you're usually tired and yeah, I don't yeah. Know. 
at in the mode. So yeah, but it's nice, yeah, to visit around, of course, meet I new felt people. Very bad because in 2019, I was, I applied to be the coach for the U.S. delegation for World Youth, World Cadet, under eight, under ten, under twelve, mm -hmm. and it was in China. I was very excited, and it turned out mm -hmm. to be in Weifang, China, which is okay. nowhere. Like people in China don't know where it is. That that's how. <laughs> random of a city it is. <laughs> yeah. and uh, there's nothing there at all and i just spent like two and a half weeks in a hotel like some families came early and they went to you know forbidden city and they traveled all over china some had relatives and then they came to the tournament and i just felt very bad because now i've been to china but i didn't actually go to china i didn't see any of china so i have to go back uh, it wouldn't make a difference if you were in china or in france i mean you just in a hotel, right? Doesn't, yeah, like yeah. if it was in a difference. big city, I would try to get yeah. out more. But if it's in a small place, yeah, that's the problem. A lot of these places, like I went to the Czech Republic, I went to Pardubice. That's mm -hmm. not Prague. Prague is beautiful, you know. I'm sure Anna's been to Prague. I don't know, Creek, or you've been to Prague. Yeah, yeah. But yeah I've been to Pardubice as well. I know what you're talking about. It, there's nothing there. There's a hockey <laughs> arena. <laughs> that's it. <It's, laughs> Pardubice has one kebab stand, which gave me food poisoning. That's it. Like. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, I back got to sick. the toilet stories. Back to the toilet stories. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm gonna excuse myself for a bathroom break, if if that's alright, because I've been here for four, over four hours and I'm I'm gonna have to run away for that's, a second. But I'll be back, and also totally I'll need fine. a refill. It's totally fine. fine. I'll be back um, in a second. Only one break. Only one break. No more than that. Yeah, we have uh, we've got the Magnus game. Uh, I have a question for you. Who do you think is uh, the most surprising in the in the bottom eight? <clears throat> you know, in this event. The ones that are not qualifying, you mean? Yeah, it's close. Obviously, we don't exactly know, but uh, I mean, Rajabov has been showing a uh, huge consistency because, of course, from the top guys, there's like Dubov and Mamedjarov, but they're usually unstable in general. They're capable of making like brilliant performances, and Rajabov has been so steady in his results, like always consistent. He doesn't lose many games. So it's surprising to see him not qualifying, but he's really close, right? He's like half a point behind. Exactly, yeah. So it's still... Oh, actually... Dubov also <laughs> five and a half, I guess. But Yeah. But Levon is out also, actually, right? Or he's in... He's he eight is or nine? Out, yeah. As of now, he's out. Ah, he's out. Ah, okay. Yeah, so also... He has been playing well, yeah. I mean, Dubov, is, of course, he's been a world champion, but uh, he has his ups and downs. So it's not really surprising that once in a while he... He doesn't have like a very good tournament, but he's a genius, definitely. Love to see him play. Yes, that's also always what I what I say. Like, uh, do some yeah. of these guys? They're fun, like a niche, you know. They big on social media and the board. But Dubov, it's like, oh, he's playing. Oh, it's gonna be. I'm actually surprised because so, in this event, we haven't gotten we haven't gotten a Dubov win. We got the stalemate. You remember the stalemate where he like that was him? nice. Yeah. That was yeah. so nice, yeah. Yeah, that was that was very smart. But uh, and it's forced, right? It's kind of forced after mm -hmm. rook f one is kind of draw, yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. So saw, creative, yeah. We saw that, but um, we haven't gotten haven't gotten well. Let's check in. I mean, he's playing Firuja, right? So, have how much have you yeah. played Firuja? You've been playing Firuja for a while, right? Arena Kings, all this stuff. So, oh, a lot, yeah. <laughs> how. Uh, how have you seen his growth? Like, what did, you know, when did you meet yeah. him for the first time? Was he a GM already? Uh, I don't, uh, probably, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, I played him quite a lot in, in both, especially like in 2000, maybe 17 or 18. Had a lot of encounters, even some matches, I think I played with him. Of course, I was getting destroyed already back then, but I could play uh, at least, Blitz, I could play some games with him. Mm. But now it's become like, I don't know, almost 3,200 and of course a world-class player. So you feel a difference in his level, not only on his blitz skills or rating, but I mean, he's just playing great moves all the time. He's very consistent and he's he's matured. I mean, he just, he's playing this against these guys and he's not suffering as much as he suffered before. He, he's being more consistent. I always believe in that because I think that's what makes a difference at, at this level too. So I mean, he's becoming a real, a real threat to yeah. to being a super, super top player like forever, and maybe fighting for the world champion. I don't know for the world championship. We'll see in the following years. But it's so nice to see him play. 
Yeah, I mean, anytime, it's, like, <laughs> any, any, yeah. like it's, it's a shame he wasn't in every event. It's a... Uh... Right, yeah. He will make it pretty but... interesting if he stays in France, right? At the, at the Olympiad, for example. But the France doesn't have okay. a good anchor, like 3-4. They have a good, you know, him and MVL will be great. But unfortunately, if more people yeah. keep coming to the US... You coming to the US anytime soon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are others. <laughs> there, there, there may be others in line there, but... Not me. I'm good here in Brazil. How but is maybe, uh, Brazilian chess yeah. culture? Is it it's a lot of it? A lot of community and everything in school? or? I mean, uh, yeah, in South America, we're kind of the biggest. Together with Argentina, we're the biggest. We have tradition here, at least, in South America. But uh, we don't have that many, that many uh, like programs in chess in schools. They're growing. And, of course... Internet now made it more popular in, in Brazil. We have many YouTubers and lots of content. So, I mean, it's growing, but it, it's a long way until we can compare ourselves to any like uh, European country or Soviet country or even the US, of course. That, yeah. <laughs> Soviet might be, you know, I mean, <laughs> <But it's, laughs> yeah. yeah. The, because I, people are so excited, like people following on YouTube, especially like, what, what do we need to make Brazil like as strong as Russia? And I mean, hold on. <laughs> yeah, well. So many things, <laughs> so many decades and maybe centuries to get to that level. So it's not like two years of nice work and we're there. It's a long, long story. It, it is pretty crazy. There was some statistic that I saw. It was always funny because my highest ranking in the US was like 67, 68. Mm -hmm. uh, with my live rating. And now I'm like, I don't know, 120 or something, but I wasn't even be near anywhere. The top hundred, the top hundred guys in Russia are like average ELO 25, 30, which it's is just insane. Ridiculous. I mean, it's yeah. completely, <laughs> I, I will frequently play. You've probably had the same. You play somebody in blitz on chess.com or Russian guy, FM, never heard of him. Never. ELO, ELO 2490. Like, yes, yes, of course. And 27 blitz, 2700 yeah. blitz, 2800. Yeah, like I always play this guy, uh, German Bazeev. And this oh, guy... yeah, he's one of our guests in Blitz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you play him a lot? Yeah, see, I'm, I'm too weak. Sometimes I play him. But this guy, like, beat Yesipenko. He beats, like, all these guys in Rapid at the World Rapid. It's, un it's nuts. These guys are so good. Yeah. And you never see this guy play anywhere. No. Just Blitz player. Yep. Yeah. That's crazy. Anna, we're talking about the anonymous Russian, uh, you know, gangster chess players, so... I was trying to guess what was the topic I missed earlier. And if anything <laughs> happened in the games too, let me know. But I mean, you imagine how strong you need to be to be like in the Olympic team in Russia. So mm -hmm. if you're like 27, 20, you're out eventually. 27, 50, I don't know, 27, 10, you may be out. How absurd is that if you're playing with one team only? I know. My Midyara Vrajabov is a draw, by the way. Very peaceful resolution between the two countrymen. So... But it's not good for them, is it? Or are they counting on the last two rounds as their option? Because um, neither of them are making it. They usually don't play, right? They don't. They don't yeah. fight against each other. It's always That's, like that, I think. Yeah, we were just thinking whether the tournament situation will change that because at the moment both of them would be out of the tournament. So if you're in a situation where you need right. to play for a win. Would that would that change the fact that yes, they <laughs> they don't play against each other normally? Uh, in this case, maybe they're counting yeah. on the last two rounds, so there's still some chance. Mm. Yeah, maybe, but uh, yeah, it's it's a bad result for them. You're right. Medvedev is out. Yeah, Rajabov has chances still. Yeah, for Rajabov, yeah, Medvedev, I mean, might be mathematically eliminated, mm -hmm. even if he wins. Yeah, I nice think. Too. Yeah, we we're, were also discussing with, with Hikaru the other day about that World Championship, and Rajabov won that World Championship on their 12th in 1998. And he was a champion with a round to spare, and he played a counterman in the last round, which is funny. Because oh. he was already a champion, yeah. yeah. Oh. And they played it out, yeah. I had a... There was no draw there. I had kind of a, a similar experience at the at the world youth i i don't know you you've both played these events i've never played i was invited a couple times but my family was not a big fan of flying so i never went but 
you know, there's moments in those final rounds where the medal is decided with a win and two people from the same country play each other, right? And like, mm -hmm. one has less points. You always exactly. wonder, you know, what do the coaches say? <laughs> like, yeah, he lost. Rajapov lost that game. So oh. that, that's the... <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. And the other guy got second or third place. I don't know. I don't remember. So it's, I it's... think there's, there's a new regulation or maybe... At least in some Ready. tournaments, there are regulations about that, that you cannot play your countrymen or country women in the last round just to avoid that there's even an assumption. Because sometimes the players have nothing to do with it. Like it, it could still yeah. be the normal result, but people would think about it no matter what. Exactly. It's, it's, uh, it's, it could be uncomfortable either way. Yeah. 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 No, no matter. Mm -hmm. My craziest experience was a money tournament when I was like 15, 16. It was mm -hmm. board one, board two, board three. Neither of the players were there. Board three. Someone saw them talking to each other. Oh yeah. Yeah, and like nothing Very happened. Subtle. Nothing happened. Honestly, they brought the issue to the tournament director, and uh, you know, nothing happened. So I remember that very clearly. It's chess is a it's a weird it's a weird game sometimes. Um, yeah, there has been a lot of I mean uh, situations like in open tournaments that you feel that strange things are going on last round you know a win is very interesting for one of the players yep and yeah so we've seen it happen we've seen it happen a lot in brazil too in the, in the past generations now it's it's kind of rare but in the past it was pretty common also to see this result fixing things there, there was right. this nice thing also they were fixing results like you're 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 battling with we're fighting you're fighting with someone mm -hmm on tie break, you have the same amount of points. So they would go there and they would bribe the guy on the table playing on board 45 there, you know? Oh, so to help your tie break, oh. like if they lose. Exactly, that team. happened in the past. There were some nice stories. <laughs> wow. Oh my. Bribing for tie breaks, yeah. Yeah, that's the, the nice. we don't, we don't, <laughs> I don't think, actually we have some sort of similar tie break in this tournament, right? Like the score of the guys you, something your opponent scores minus somebody or something like that but luckily these are uh yeah luckily not the first couple of criteria because the first one is the direct encounter yeah. so that's first and foremost and then the number of ah. wins ah so those are the first two yeah yeah yes and i think it will matter so far every tour event had players with the tie break on seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth place or so, in the middle of the pack, some of them will make it, others will not. And for Rajabov, his mm -hmm. tie breaks aren't really good for for having made quite a few draws. Ah, I see. Yeah. Well, of course, it will depend on who else will be uh, on the same number of points. Which game is the most exciting? I was looking at um, the Grand Dalius yeah. pitch shot game for the opening. That <laughs> it's a it's an appealing one. Yeah, this was a crazy game. It was a uh, very against Alvin. <laughs> very weird position from the opening. Very dynamic. Crazy game. Look at this. Some huh. now on move I played 20. It. Okay, this ah uh, this G4 stuff, yeah. I think I played this G4 once if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Seems like a very direct Super. move. You're saying like let's have some fun. Yeah, I don't need your knight on F6 to play G4. <laughs> yeah. G4 and, yeah. and G5 and so why is white so much so much better because the king is safe because actually bishop D3 and there's no attack is that why yeah the king on, yeah probably black has trouble to defend G7 I guess and bishop D3 is pretty yeah bishop D3 rook B1 is coming at some point mm. actually maybe now is an idea already and if yeah this is trouble for black definitely Right, because castles, there's also h6 and mate very soon. Basically mate. Doesn't matter what you do, right? Yeah, it almost feels like the king is safer in the middle of the board <laughs> if you compare it to that king side, but not looking good for Alan Pichot, unfortunately. Do you know him well, <laughs> Krikor, I wonder? Yeah, yeah, I played a lot of, many times with him, yeah. I'm sorry He's if like... this was already discussed, because I, I no. missed a few minutes. I don't know if this came up earlier. No, I was no. wondering. It has not. Yeah, he, he's like, what, he's like uh, 20, 23 or something. He's pretty young, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, turning but, 23 this year. We couldn't believe it when we looked up his age. Yeah, yeah. so he didn't play quite a lot. I remember when he was, uh, he was he was world champion, right? Under 16. He 
was, right? Yeah, he was world champion, I think, under 16. Possibly. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. exact achievements, but definitely. No, no, he was. A, a good results at the World Youth Championships. Yeah. No, I remember him playing in Brazil already at, at that time. And I also played against him in, uh, in Argentina a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty talented and he's he, he's really solid and consistent. So he's he's going to improve quite a lot, I think, still. He's one of our biggest promises in a. Uh, in South America, definitely, with 23 years old, 26, 30. And his focus definitely in, in, in playing a lot and working on his game. So we believe quite a lot in him. Yeah. How He's do you say the... his last name? We well, say Pichot, I don't know. Really? Well, that's, what, that's what we say. I say Pichot. Yeah, like Pichot. Pichot. Yeah. Pichot. I, I, I learned Pichot, but... I was, I was then corrected that it's Pichot, so now I don't know which one to believe. <laughs> uh, we we don't Pichot. we have had this discussion because there are so many pronunciations. We got to get Pichot, him on the show. P Pichot, that, and then... Pichot, Pichot. Like, there are like four possible ways. But what kind of... What origin is this? Is this like... It seems French? French. It seems French, yeah. So it's... Yeah. It seems French, but He's yeah. Argentinian, and also I was told that this could... Uh, will. It could also be simply a Spanish surname, not not a very common one, but sure. yeah, depends. LMP, yeah. People are telling me Wait. I'm right. I just read it from the chat because, like, that was my assumption from Spanish language. In Spanish, you do pronounce the C H as Che, and that the T doesn't disappear. Pichot. So, in in that sense, mm -hmm. it's Pichot, but maybe maybe that's not. I guess what matters is how he says his own name. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We got to get him yeah. on, and we'll be like, "How do you say your name?" <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining. <laughs> yeah, we say Alan. We say Alan and it's fine. Yeah. So we don't we don't have any yeah, trouble. Alan. We usually call mm -hmm. him Alan. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. It's easier. He castles. I mean, I don't H6? What is there? Is there how do you stop me? Queen D4? Okay, so what happened? Check? No. Oh, there was some moves. King D2. Huh. Oh. King D2, so check. Ah, okay, so yeah. H6, well, we got to take, right? What else? Yeah. But then you take, how is that? A, is that, how are, ah, the queen d4, there's queen d4. H6, yeah. queen d4. Hmm. Yeah, right, but... so queen d4 is the, the, the only way. If f6, queen e6, so that's yeah. bad. He's very brave for castling, but I don't know if he had anything else. And he had a, such a good start. He had like he made a draw with Karyak in first round, and he had a draw with Black against Rajabov. And then he's like, "Okay, let's go. We're feeling good. It's not that hard to fight these guys." <laughs> and then he starts losing many games because it happens, right? He's like in clear last place now, yeah, for some rounds now. It's uh, it's it's his first time, I guess, playing at at this level, and it's it's very challenging. It must be strange that the first time you play the Super GM event is online. This is like very rare case because this has never yeah. happened before. So normally you see mm -hmm. them and you're there with them, but now mm -hmm. it's it's a, it's a very different experience. How many of the players have you played? Actually, I was gonna ask. Of these guys? Yeah. Like in a over the board, right? You mean? Yeah, I mean, I know some you've yeah. obviously yeah. played online more, but of course. Yeah, I played with I played with Magnus in a one hour game in uh, 2014 in Brazil when he visited. He played a tournament here. So oh. I played him in an open tournament. Yeah, one hour game. It was fun. It's a nice game, actually. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We're in the first board at this tournament after six rounds. I had six points. He had five and a half. So I was leading oh. at that time. Yeah. <laughs> he was paired up against you. Nice. Yeah, he, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was leading the tournament. It was like 20 GMs, pretty strong tournament. Peter Nielsen also played, actually. He was here. Tivyakov played. You know, many South American turn GMs, too. So, yeah, it was an Italian opening, and I had a good, I had a fine position, but as usual, slowly but surely, Magnus won his game. So, <laughs> but it was nice, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I hadn't played, hadn't played with many of those players over the board, I think. Actually, I played with uh, with Jordan, but Van Forest when he was like uh, in 2014, he was like I don't know, 13 years old maybe mm -hmm. in Germany, and with Pichot of course, yeah. In, I think I don't I didn't play with the other ones. Granka in Germany in in the, the which tournament in Germany? 
you know, in generally small tournament, bad, uh, bad vision, something. Oh, okay. This vision, uh, yeah. Small tournament, yeah. Where, uh, yeah. when you, I, see, like, serious question. I, as an American, it is impossible to search for tournaments in Europe. I used this website when I was researching called Chess Calendar EU. Is there a better resource? It's a I mess, mean, right? <laughs> it's a mess. I mean, I don't know where is what. Like, I'm, there's no calendar. So what did you use? How did you find these small tournaments? Or did they just reach out because they knew you were good? I mean, we used to... There was this other website, right? I don't know. I don't use it. I, I don't check it anymore. But this chess mix or something, right? That was I've never heard organized. of that. See? What? What is that? Really? <laughs> I've never heard of it. It's impossible. I'm telling you. Like, there's no... Come on, I'm sure Anna knows this website. Yeah, I've heard. I've used that site. Yeah. Chess calendar too. Like we were <laughs> far off of like that. That's a one. That's a browser too that you use. That's. I mean, that's that's a site we would use. A FIDE calendar has the the main ones, but not all tournaments. It's true. It's better now. Yeah, the FIDE calendar. It's it's better now. Yeah, but usually, I mean, we we go into the when you're like really determined. Okay, I'm gonna spend like two months in Europe, and you go searching like in a federations website, and then you go and you. You end up finding something because okay, we're, we're gonna be there at this time. So, and email the organizers, and eventually you already know the events happening at that time of the year. So, after some time, you get used to to the process. But I just it's tried much to go more... to chess mix and so... it crashed. <laughs> it's probably not <laughs> in there anymore. Everyone is going to chess mix now. Maybe this is, is, this maybe is the, down. The, the problem with ever talking about it, or maybe it's just yeah, it's literally not working. Because I guess there's there's yeah. been no tournaments for a while. So queen d4. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. it's not something we, we could use nowadays. Hopefully, a world of tournaments come back at some point when the world goes back to normal. First first thing first, so sorting out the pandemic. Magnus oh, people so... are saying Mr. the win or something. I don't know. Has he? I don't know. A win. Where was the win, dearest members of the chat? Dearest Talkfish, I mean, dearest members of the chat. <laughs> Where did you, where did you miss the win? <laughs> yes, what what was the win? But Levon again has no time, all the time. He has no time. Yeah. King G two. Okay, I mean, why this is looks this promising too? Why is it not? Okay, so what's happening here? Rook, let me see, rookie three. He goes what? Okay, rookie. Why is it so bad for black? Because black has to wait, right? I'm gonna bring King C2, King D2 probably. Because oh. you cannot take anything. And then kick the rook out and go for the B pawn. Yeah, I mean I just just bring the king over. But rook E2, okay, that's a move, but what then? Ah, rook C1, maybe he wants to take on A2. Ah, he wants to take maybe. I don't know. According to Sassy, it's a, it's a draw. So arivaluationbaronchess.com uh, likes it still for white, but Sassy, the Norwegian supercomputer, evaluated as zero, zero, zero. Sassy doesn't like to. Yeah, basically, it's everything is a draw, right? In this. Yes. <laughs> big computers. Chess is a always, draw. Always comes to zero, zero. It was plus six before. See, say someone said. Yeah, but the players don't know that. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> they don't know. So it may, maybe there was there was something, but you know, actually, Sessi sometimes will say like plus eight, and if you follow the moves, it's not uh. clear why it's winning. It just says like plus eight, but it doesn't actually uh -huh. show you why. I've seen that before. Hmm. So. And, and people go crazy, like, how did Magnus waste the win with plus five? I mean, he should retire. He's I not know. playing well. What's happening with him? <laughs> Everybody go crazy. True. But uh, he played logical last moves. I don't know. By the way, if we, yes. if we also switch to the other endgame for a second, uh, can Anish hold this night endgame against Jordan van Fres? Because for Anish, this tournament was going very well, but... He has just lost a game. He was unbeaten, and then he he has now lost to Jan Nepomnyshi. Is he about to lose a second game? Who did he lose to last round? Uh, Nepomnyshi. Yeah. Nepomnyshi ah. managed to beat him. So Anish was leading the tournament, and and we were yeah. we were talking about this that the previous tour event too, 
and Ish was doing very well after the first two days. Yeah. And then he had a meltdown on day three. He definitely is aware that since that happened to him, it no, he, he will try to do everything to avoid it. But is this position holdable? Can he defend this? Oh, but he didn't qualify in the last tournament. He did, right? He didn't. No, he was. Ah, he he was. Wow. He messed it up very badly on the last day. So he went from wow. being among the leaders to not making it to the next stage, not qualifying. Wow. That's surprising. Yeah. Now, yeah, computer says it's bad for him. Yeah, this A pawn is so annoying in these night end games. Like King B5, probably? No? Yeah, King, I'm confused what he's thinking about because I'm not sure you have another move or is he thinking King A6? Yeah, King B5 thinking? is such a comfortable move to make, but maybe Queen, King A6, I don't see the point. Yeah, you have to play King B5 later anyway, right? So. Yeah, there's Knight E4 and Knight C3, but I don't. Uh, yeah, but still, you play E5 and go to King with, go to C5 with the King, I guess. Although there is Knight F1, maybe he's calculating. He plays King. I mean, you have to go Knight F5, right? I mean, Knight F1. Really? I mean, it's there's no way back. Oh, he did play. Well, wow. like I always say, if they play what I play, might be bad. Or I'm a genius. <laughs> so it's a good sign for you, but not a good sign for them. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, unless it turns out to be a good move. But yeah, he's uh, this looks terrible. This looks terrible for how how happy are you when you're like following a game and you see like, oh, I think this move is nice. And Magnus plays this move and it's a huge blunder. Are you happy? <laughs> In a way? Oh, I get, like, I get, I get it. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not yeah. the worst thing, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think, I think so. Like, um, not the worst thing. You know, you've done those training exercises and you study for ten minutes and you play the move, and in the book it's like, yeah, this was played in the game, but it's the worst <laughs> move in the world. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. yeah, actually, this is much better. So sometimes I'm like, you know, I thought what he thought, or you know, what she thought. So it's uh, could be worse. Exactly. So I think, I think it's fine. Um, especially because, you know, you wouldn't know the truth until after they analyze it and then they show you what was correct. But if in the game you played the move and it looked yeah. correct, then I don't think you can be so upset. But yeah, yeah. for the most part, I'm usually so, upset at my chess. I'm not, uh, <laughs> not very proud. So now you're not making a queen there because the knight is like such an awkward position. You cannot maneuver like, you know, knight d7, knight c4, any square you go, it's not really helping. Even though my, my knight is so far away on h2. Of right, course, cause... we see the eval bar that there's no win right away. But So where is he heading? He's playing knight c4. What do you think is the right plan here? Well, king a7 you have to play, right? Yep. Yeah, king b6 is a huge threat now. because Yeah. And now he's probably... Okay, knight c I didn't think of. Okay, he wants to play... Okay, knight c8 is a threat. And a7, king a6... <laughs> so you have to go back. Yeah. Yeah, e7, then it's... Okay, there's king b7, actually. Sorry. That's not really... Oh, actually, that's not a threat. You can go to b7 after you make that. Ah. Uh, so, like, okay. knight g4, knight c8, king b8, king b8. b7, king b7. Actually, that would be a big problem, because then you can't move at all. <laughs> yeah, and you start thinking about... Losing eventually. So maybe king b8, king b6? No, but ah, you cannot take, of course, because of e7. Yeah. Now knight, whatever, knight, f, knight f6, and then, yeah, knight, f6, knight f6, a7, uh -huh. king a8, yeah. king a6, and then the knight approaches to. Oh my god, knight d7. Or, knight or d5. d5. Yeah, yeah. And you stop knight b6, mate. <laughs> Just yeah. in time. Just in... But is that endgame? What is the evaluation? Can't the white king go win the pawns? Ah, because, oh, I thought it was four against two. It's four against three, actually. So, no, that's just winning for white. You're right. Definitely, you're right. Okay, so then the question is, what if it's, oh, king a8, so it's not a check. Yeah, he doesn't give it. But still, a7 is trans... Oh, no, then king b7, right, of course. So, king b6? Yeah, but it's probably a little bit too slow, but maybe, yeah. 
Knight, knight f6, I guess. Yeah, then I'm going to be checking you like... Yeah, it's possible. Maybe it's the best try. But it feels like whenever you go to take the pawn like on e6 with a king, I'm going to go knight e4 and I'm going to take on g3 to f4 like all at once. So, of course, we're guided by the evil board that it's saying it's like only plus one. Then it's easier to make. Right. I was asked the other day how stronger you would be like in online blitz if you could see the evil bar every single time. Yeah. What do you think about that? Without blitz, without seeing the moves, of course, only the mm -hmm. evaluation. Yeah. Blitz is hard because you don't have the time to react, right? Like, I feel like that's a, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred points. At, yeah, but like probably. you would just it would it, the problem is it's only like one or two moves a game, right? You can't constantly be you in classical. Even... I mean, I have a question for you. If if, <laughs> two, if if two times during a classical game, two times you are allowed yeah. to look at the best engine move, only the times. first one. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, how much higher rated would people be? Two times in a game, you can look at the computer to find the best move. It's in the rules. So what, uh, let's say it's <laughs> just, just part of the rules. See, they just released that. Yes. <laughs> yesterday. Uh, they could use that in April's full, actually. That's a good one. They could use that. <laughs> yeah, now that you <laughs> maybe maybe some 50 points. I don't know. It's it's hard to use it in a proper way. Right. Maybe some 50 points. Yeah. It's tough. Well, at least here, how about this? Would you know that your opponent did it? Because if you know your opponent is going to check the engine, then you're probably going to check the engine too. Because... Oh, my opponent can also do that? Yeah, of course, yeah. Oh, but then I'm not going to improve my rating. Come on. Well, maybe one of you is more efficient. <laughs> they, you you ah, use the okay. engine better. <laughs> <laughs> I know, only five were using it. Like, then it's interesting, because if you know they're going to use it, you're going to use it too. So you just neutralize. But if you don't know, then it's hard to ah. pick the moment. It's hard to pick the right moment. So I, It I is. Know. Yeah, it's tricky, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, I see everybody writing uh, the Brazilian meme in in relation to this. Oh um, yeah, I love it. So apparently now King B six and running to the pawns is winning. King C five should be winning. I mean, of course, we're looking at plus two. But why did he? Play? Probably he's gonna go now. I mean, he's not gonna make a draw. Jordan is a very ambitious player. He's not gonna make a draw here for sure. There's no point in making a draw. King C five. He can never lose this game. He will he not plays, repeat. He plays nice. King B five. It's this is so weird, but okay. Keeps the advantage. Is it because knight c7 is losing or something? <clears throat> I don't see I don't see the point on king b5. It's a weird move. It's so strong, king c5, king d6. Oh, he wanted it like this. Interesting. But okay, yeah. It's it's also very annoying for black. It's surprising to see it's only 0 0.9. It feels like it's much. I mean, it should be close to winning here. Oh, uh, knight a2. Knight I was going to say that, that the only way this can be close to that evaluation is if the black knight will manage to grab the pawns. But yeah, you need to go for this strange maneuver, knight to a2, to bring it back to c Yeah, nice. Then. Nice move. Wow. It's a nice one. And what happens? So the the king of white could start marching toward the king side and then you could try to defend e2 with knight d4 oh but then there's knight e4 as well going for the g3 pawn yeah with 30 seconds it's a very difficult decision now because knight f8 your pawn's gonna be gonna be maybe knight f8 and e3 maybe because at least you're not taking all of them it still looks like it's winning but uh, i see that it's not I really think this is winning. Knight c7. Wow. Ah, he wants to go to d5, but then he loses some. Yeah. It's just, it's logical too. Yeah. By the way, Carlson and Aronian made a draw. Hmm. So they drew. Okay. The only That's game nice remains. Grandilius. Yeah. Now king e5, king c5 is coming and. Yeah, nice defense by by Anishir, definitely. King b6 is a nice move, so you're approaching the knight on c3 too. You can play e4, no trade. Yeah. 
He played this. He played. He, you're finding the moves. See, you should be happy now. <laughs> you're finding all the moves. And I was actually, I was actually joking. I didn't think that E4 them. was a good move. <laughs> oh. But he played yeah, it. It was so. only two, two pair of pawns for each, so less and less material, and each will hold it. I, I didn't think that this was serious because you can't move your knight, right? Well, you could still move the king. King E5, King E5, and G4, but yeah. Yeah, maybe King E5 or King E6. I want to play g4 and then knight f6, but yeah. The well, maybe it's not that that easy. Maybe. Yeah, maybe not. It certainly doesn't help to have ten seconds. Yeah, because if Jordan wins the one of the pawns there, even if Black brings the king, two against one is always tricky with the knights. Yeah. It's very tricky. Yeah. So he shouldn't lose the pawn, but apparently there's a way he doesn't lose the pawn. H5, oh, H5. does oh, work, H5. H4, H4, H4. Wow. H4. But such... Ah, he have CK, H4. Nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, in the meantime, by the way, yeah. Niels Grandeus has won officially his game against Ellen Pichot. So this is the only game of the round. And there are there will be two more rounds, but for now, round 13, this is the last one. Mm -hmm. Damn. That was a... Uh... That's it. King and Knight is coming. Knight. Yeah. <laughs> he just gave away his knight. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can't uh <laughs> you cannot win. Wow, that's a There's brutal a game, but uh Anish survives. That's the draw. Yeah, nice. Jordan is always keeps putting pressure in these big guys, apparently. They just so he has some nice opening ideas and he's he's playing very ambitiously all the time, I think. So he's improving quite a lot, yeah. Thirteen rounds, Magnus nine and a half, eight and a half. He nothing's changed. Literally, nothing's changed. Hikaru and Wesley still have... Uh, but MVL... Giri has, Giri has nine, right? Yes, Giri, Giri has nine. Oh, nine. Yeah. Yeah. It was an important yeah. one for him to hold this endgame, yes. And yeah. the next two rounds will decide everything. Hikaru's last two opponents are Ali Reza Firuja and Magnus Carlsen. So this is going to be a fun one. Yeah. Uh, Krikor. Yeah. It's uh, a draw. Yeah, a draw is decent for Firuja, but let's see. Yeah. It'll be... Yeah. Well, it was a okay. pleasure to have you. It uh, was nice to, to be around. Thank you, Anna, Levy, chat, Thank everyone. you so much for joining us. I was just going to remind the viewers that uh, the Quaker streams on Twitch. You guys should follow his channel. Yes. And uh, do you stream both in Portuguese and and English, or is it mainly? The... It's only in Portuguese now, but last time I got a huge raid from Hik Hikaru. Then we had an English stream for like two hours. I see. Because so we need to make the sure there are more English <laughs> English viewers to English language yeah. viewers going your way so you will have both languages. Yeah. But in the meantime, make sure to support Krikor on his channel as well. Thank yeah. you, Anna. Levy. For sure. Uh, this is okay. Uh...